Welcome to the second video in the series that I'm doing on rebuilding the router lift in the shop. In the first video, I took the old router lift out of the table saw, took it apart to find out everything that was wrong with it and could be improved. I designed a new one, and in this video, I'm gonna build it. Let's cut some plywood. Before we get started, let's take a look at what we're building today. There's a router that's clamped into a carriage here with three wing nuts that are on some threaded rod. We turn this lead screw back here, it goes down, and if you turn it the other way, it goes up again. That lead screw goes through this bearing block here, and in that bearing block is a lead screw nut that helps it lift up and down. So the first thing we're gonna do is to make a plywood box, and to make a plywood box, the first thing you do is cut some plywood rectangles. Next, we're gonna cut a couple of slots into the sides of the housing that will accept the dust guard, which will make it a lot easier when it comes time to glue the whole thing up. So we take a cut, then we adjust the fence a tiny bit. We take another cut, test to see if the dust guard fits, adjust a tiny bit, take another cut, test to get a great fit. The dust guard has a rectangular slot in it that allows the bearing block to slide up and down and I'll do that by drilling some holes and cutting out with the jigsaw. With all the pieces cut for the housing, we can glue it up. There are three parts that need to be cut out of big glued up blocks of plywood. So I'll slather on a bunch of glue and put on some clamps, wait a little while and take the clamps off. I'll square those up on the table saw and cut out some templates that I printed with the shapes of the blocks on them. And then I'll attach the templates to the blocks with some spray adhesive on both sides. With the spray adhesive holding the templates onto the blocks, I'm going to use the chop saw and the table saw wherever I can to get straight, parallel, and perpendicular cuts, and then take it to the band saw to do the rounded and angled parts. The two pieces of the carriage are thick enough that I need to make two passes on the table saw to get through them. And then over at the bandsaw, I can cut along those template lines to get the shape of the pieces of the carriage. None of these cuts are super critical in terms of accuracy, except for maybe the inside radius where the router goes, but that I will clean up on the sander after I'm done here. This is the carriage, and this threaded rod is gonna be epoxied into the large back piece of the carriage. It'll stick out through the smaller front piece on the left here. I'll take these two pieces and stack them up and clamp them together so I can drill straight through into the places where the wing nuts are gonna go. The clamping force on the carriage is gonna be significant because the wing nuts need to hold that rotor really tightly in place. So I'm tapping the holes here with a 5 16ths tap so the threaded rod has a little more to grip onto with the epoxy. Now it's just a matter of testing the fit of the router into the carriage, sanding it, smoothing out the edges, testing again, doing a little more sanding on the inside radius, and testing again until we get a good fit. Just going to cut down some threaded rod that we can epoxy directly into those holes that were just tapped in the carriage. While you watch this epoxy get wrapped around the threads of this rod, screwed into this tapped hole in the carriage of the router lift. Take a minute to subscribe to the channel and like the video. This is a scrap of HDPE that I have laying around the shop. I wanna use it for the runners, for the lift, as well as for the tracks that those 
runner's run in. Uh, it's real slick. I originally bought it for table saw runners because it's slippery. So we'll just cut out a couple of blocks for the tracks and we'll cut a couple of little strips off for the runners. Then we can just hog out some material from those tracks, which will give a nice space for the runners to run in. Tracks are gonna sit up at the top of the housing like this. The runners are gonna ride in the tracks and the runners are gonna be attached permanently to the carriage like that. This is gonna be a little too wide for the box and that's by design because I wanna be able to creep up on it. So what I'm gonna do is attach the runners to the carriage like that with screws. I'll make sure that the screws are buried down in far enough so that there's a little extra space here on either side that I can trim off on the table saw to creep up on a really nice fit. These are the countersinks on those runners and they're super deep so that when these screws go through the table saw, they don't hit the blade. I don't wanna hit the screws, but I'm gonna run the saw with the safety mechanism disabled for this so that if I do get too close to them, it won't trigger and destroy my blade in the break. So I'll cut a little off, test the fit. Cut a little more, test the fit. And that's perfect. And I'll just knock down these corners to prevent it jamming up in the tracks. This is a 5 16 coupling nut that I'm drilling out so that I can epoxy it onto the lead screw and use it as a bolt head to turn it. Just kidding. I'm gonna put the coupling nut onto the end of the lead screw here and just loosely put it on there, hit it with the hammer. The inertia of the lead screw holds it in place while the coupling nut slides down with a lot of force and jams it on there really tight. And that's just never gonna come loose. This is one of two ledge pieces that are holding the lead screw in place. And this one needs a little notch cut out because there's a dust guard that passes through it. And then I'll clamp that to the other ledge piece so I can align the holes that are being drilled in them and drill them both in a single pass on the drill press. Here's the carriage. This is the bearing block that's gonna be attached directly to that carriage. Swing around back. This ledge, this ledge, and those two are going to have bearings on them. This lead screw nut is gonna be right on there. What we need to do is get a hole in here that aligns with those two holes and has a diameter that can accept this bearing nut. So I'll mark that off and first drill a clearance hole that the lead screw can pass through and then counter bore that to make space for the bearing nut. Put the bearing nut in and drill some pilot holes so that we can put a few screws in there just to hold it in place. Here's our final sandwich. This goes here and this goes here. The bearings go on top in both cases. Mm -hmm. Each of those bearings is held onto the ledges with some small screws that I'm putting in here. Then those two ledges with the bearings screwed in can be glued onto the housing. I'm just marking off where the glue is gonna go and applying a little glue. And I'll do the same on the other side, but whoops, I put glue all the way across and there's a little gap there but that's okay just wipe it off and then the lead screw is held into the bearings just with these little small set screws that I'll tighten in place here okay so with that you can load it up And that about does it. The lift mechanism works well now with the drill for power, but before I add dust collection mounted on a table and add a fence, 
I'm going to do one more video adding some automation in the form of a motor and some electronics to be able to precisely control the height. Stay tuned.